evening, my friends, or mornings. That's usually when I post these. I record them the night before. Post them the next morning. I'm your host at TC Popcorn. It's time for another edition of Quarantine Cards Round 5. And let me just thank Mrs. Popcorn for a minute. My uh, camera person who, after I got through all of this soliloquy that I usually talk about at the beginning of the show, ended up uh, accidentally hitting the stop button. So here we are restarting. Um, this glass was more full when I started. I'm drinking Vodka Cranberry Sprite, which is one of my go-tos. You can still see the ice is in here, so it's cold and fresh. So uh, cheers to you. There's a lot of vodka right now in the liquor cabinet, so that's why I'm going to it recently. You may remember on St. Patrick's Day, I did the, my six-year-old calls it the green up, the green river in vodka, and then uh, what I didn't tell you during my last episode was that I was actually drinking pink lemonade in vodka. You could probably see that it was a pink glass and probably assume something along those lines. I get made fun of often by a lot of my friends because I like to order fruity drinks when we go out. Um... There was a restaurant, Jimmy Buffett used to have a restaurant, um, Cheeseburger in Paradise is what it was called. Not Margaritaville, which is his big chain. He had Cheeseburger in Paradise, which was kind of an offshoot of it. And it was in Lombard. And they had a drink called Euphoria that I got made fun of every time I would order it because I had to order it in a different manner to my servers, of course. Um, so since the missus uh, has caused me to forget everything that I wrote, I'm looking forward to open some more cards here in a few moments. And thank you to Mrs. Popcorn, because I guess I could be the one holding the camera. Instead, she's the one sitting there shaking her head at my comments and trying to not shake the camera, which she did in the last one. So maybe this will be a clean video right now instead of the last start. Um, I want to start, uh, I guess, on a serious note. Um, there is another minor league broadcaster um, that I saw who's younger than me. He's in his mid-30s early to mid-30s, who has actually been told to assume that he has coronavirus. Um, what happened is he's feeling the symptoms and called his doctor over the phone, and they said, you know, you're not feeling bad enough to be admitted to the hospital, so we're not going to test you, but assume that you have it, react accordingly, and do all of that. Um, it's kind of scary to think that, you know, because of the fact that he's not admitted to the hospital, that... Um, they're just kind of letting it take its course, but because he's in a younger uh, demographic and kind of can overcome it a little bit, they're basically just saying be cautious with it. So my advice to you out there, wash your hands. Today was uh, Takeout Tuesday. Hopefully you went somewhere to spend a few bucks and uh, keep the economy moving somewhat um, with a local place perhaps by taking out some food today. Um, one of my nightly traditions, I guess, during this quarantine has been uh, watching Dr. Drew, he always appears on the West Coast out in L.A. on Fox 11, which is an L.A. Fox affiliate. And each night, he kind of just addresses questions and some things that he's hearing about the virus and whatnot. And Dr. Drew, you may or may not remember from the TV show Love Line, if uh, you grew up in the 90s, that was almost a nightly staple for me to uh, listen to on the radio at that point before it got to, to have about an hour on MTV for a while as well. Um, but he was saying when it comes to takeout, right, because I had this conversation with one of my friends on Facebook today who was a little worried about, you know, ordering takeout food. Most people now are using gloves when they handle their food, um, but they're going to give it to you in a bag. So when you get the bag and you get home, take your food containers out of the bag, throw out the bag, and then wash your hands. Take the food containers Take your food out of those containers, throw out the containers, and then wash your hands again, and then you're good. So yeah, it seems like a little bit of overkill, but if you're really concerned about potentially contracting it from takeout, that's the best route to go. So uh, I hope you had a chance, like I said, to partake in Takeout Tuesday. Uh, the economy is going to need the help here over the coming weeks, hopefully, um, as things start to get back to normal. Um, I had this conversation moments ago. We were putting our six-year-old to bed. And she is obsessed with having a pet. She's been asking us like crazy to have a pet. Um, today was a pony, right? So we're reading this book about pony. I want a pony. Um, and it had me wondering, what kind of pet have you always wanted but never got? And I don't mean like, you know, a dog or a cat or a guinea pig or a fish um, or a tarantula, I guess, or a snake. Um, but what kind of exotic pet would you want to have? Um, I think that would be kind of cool to think of some exotic pets that you might want um, and just, you know, all things off the table, right? Assume that everything's safe and you can have anything as your pet. Maybe you want a pet monkey, 
That'd be kind of cool, right? On a shoulder. <laughs> um, and I bring this up because of my conversation with my six-year-old, and also because I think I'm about to start watching Tiger King on Netflix, which apparently is just batshit crazy about some guy who like leads a religious cult. Um, and he's like the king of tigers. Like he has all these pet tigers because he has his own pet zoo or something like that. Um, I haven't watched it yet. I'm looking forward to watching it. I heard, like I said, that it's insane. Um, it's a true crime documentary. It's real. Um, and I'm obsessed with those on Netflix. And I know we talked on an earlier episode about finding some things to watch and maybe that'll be a, an interesting one to binge over the next couple of days. Um, finishing up Shit's Creek right now, which, uh, was made by the son of Eugene Levy. His name is Daniel Levy. And he's hilarious. It's a show that's grown on me. Um, and it's finally coming to its conclusion for us. Um, I got turned on to it by some of my coworkers, And we made it through the five seasons that were on Netflix. And now the sixth season is on demand. And so we're finishing that up before we turn to the batshit crazy Tiger King. Before we were recording this, I was uh, watching a live concert. One of my favorite bands, something you may not know about me, is uh, the band Fish. And they've decided that on Tuesday nights, they're going to do what's called Dinner in a Movie. Trey Anastasio, who's the lead singer of Fish, just uh, canceled his tour for the summer because of coronavirus. Um, so to give back to the fans, and because there's not any live music out there, like a lot of artists are doing, they're just having Tuesday concerts. And in this case, they're just digging into their archives. Fish is such a big following that they broadcast every one of their concerts live through what's called Live Fish. So they have all these videos in this deep, deep archive that they can go to. So they're playing live concerts on Tuesday nights at 7.30 Central Time, and they're following it with dinner. So they're putting a recipe out as well that you can make dinner and share pictures of the dinner while you're having dinner and a movie with the band, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, last night, I watched Metallica Monday. Every Monday, Metallica is going to be posting a concert live. And if you can believe it, I've never seen them in concert, and I've only watched, I guess, a little bit of them in concert. Uh, last night, they were live from Ireland, I guess, not live, but it was a live concert from Ireland from uh, 2019 summer. And also yesterday, I watched Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood um, performing in the home studio of Garth Brooks, which was pretty neat. There's a lot of those artists who are out there. I talked about Luke Combs a couple weeks ago, who played like four songs from his basement. Um, on Thursday night, I'll be watching Alex Williams, who's a country artist that I've grown to like a lot over the past couple of weeks. Um, I just saw him open for Cody Jinks. And uh, Alex Williams is performing a live concert on Thursday night. So check it out. You never know what's out there. Um, today, I was doing some cleaning around the house. We moved into our current location a little over a year and a half ago. Um, and there's still stuff in boxes. So I was going through and trying to unpack those boxes with the missus. And uh, much to her dismay, she was very upset when she was wondering why I still have a lot of items um, like programs right so I've got you know programs from baseball games and football games that I've been to um, NFL Major League Baseball Division One college games um, they're mementos to me um, along with programs from you know musical productions that I've been to uh, in Chicago the Phantom of the Opera is a personal favorite um, so I was wondering you know as I was going through and I didn't throw out any of the programs. I got rid of a bunch of other stuff. Um, she's actually proud of me for getting rid of a lot of the stuff that I was able to do so that we can actually try and, you know, fully feel like we're moved into this establishment now, um, our abode of two years this summer. Um, anyway, so I was wondering, at TC Popcorn on Twitter, um, you can just hit a comment on, your, on the Facebook page here as you're watching as well. And like I said, feel free to share this. I just got a text. Ah. It's from my buddy who's watching uh, <laughs> the Fish concert right now. I thought that was funny, too. I'm sitting on my couch texting him about a concert from 2012 as if we were sitting next to each other at the show talking about it. Uh, cheers, Brett. Um, so uh, what is one thing that you would never want to get rid of that you can't part with? Um, even if your significant other is like, you have to get rid of this. What is one thing you would not want to get rid of? Comment, tweet. Um, let me know. Share this out on uh, Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. It's at TC Popcorn on all of those if you wish. Um, before we get to the baseball cards here in just a moment, I got one more thing to note. Um, first of all, thanks to Andrew Salgado, who I was talking about in my last episode, who shared out the picture and was like, hey, look at this. It's pretty cool. Wow, my phone's blown up again. <laughs> more 
messages about fish. Uh, so yeah, I got the Fitbit that's telling me these things. I'm not fancy to have one of the Apple iWatches. Um, anyway, my hat is uh, a hat from Canton, Ohio, and from the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which I've been to twice. I've also been to the Basketball Hall of Fame and to Cooperstown in New York, which of course is the home of Baseball's Hall of Fame. So what are your thoughts on Hall of Fame? First of all, has anybody been to the NHL Hall of Fame? Which one is your favorite? Um, Canton is actually my least favorite, believe it or not. Uh, and like I said, I've been there twice. It's the only one that I've been to more than once. Cooperstown was just such an event. And the way the community embraces that and whatnot. Um, and what I liked about the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts, is just how interactive it is and how you have a chance to get involved in a lot of different things. Like, you can try to have hands as fast as Pistol Pete Maravich, and you can size up and see how big you are compared to Minute Bull. That kind of stuff. Um, so if you've been to a Pro Football Hall of Fame or to Cooperstown or to any Hall of Fame, let me know which ones are your favorite. Uh, maybe you've even visited the RV Hall of Fame, which I believe is somewhere around uh, South Bend, Indiana. Um, College Football Hall of Fame, I think, is down in Atlanta, something along those lines as well. Um, let me know where you visited, what you thought of it, which ones are your favorite. Rank them in order. If I'm ranking those three in order that I've been to, like I said, I'm going Cooperstown, I'm going Springfield, Massachusetts, NBA, or I guess basketball, not NBA. And then uh, the third one is going to be Canton out of the three that I visited. So let me know where yours stack up. All right, into the cards, the reason for the quarantine cards, episode five. Uh, I'm going to dive in first to 2020 Tops opening day, which, as you know, has been kind of a staple. There's not a lot of cards in there, so I just kind of quickly go through them and uh, take a look at what we have. I still have not gotten a broadcaster card. I know there's a few of them out there, and I think I was going to tell a broadcaster story, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a good friend of mine was featured by Baseball America recently, telling some stories that happened to him on the road. So maybe you were part of this story or have heard this story. It happened this last summer. Uh, we were on a six-game road trip, and the Boomers were in one city and going to another that was only about two hours away. So usually, um, you know, those trips are a little longer, and so you're getting somewhere at, you know, five, six in the morning or whatnot. Um, in this case, we were where we needed to be by midnight. Um, and this particular location had us at a different hotel because the hotel they were usually at had just changed ownership. And they couldn't find any other hotels for us because there was some big convention in town. Um, and it was interesting because they found out ahead of time what time we were getting in. And we're like, oh, shoot. You know, it's supposed to happen where you have those rooms reserved for a team when they're already on the road. It's technically an extra night on the road for the hotel. Um, so this hotel was keeping me in the loop. I also doubled as a traveling secretary for the Boomers. And as we got there... Um, he was calling me every day and saying, hey, you know, we have these many rooms that are going to be ready for you. Um, turns out that we got there and all but three rooms were ready. Um, and so we put all the players in the rooms and it was the coaching staff's rooms who weren't ready. So we ended up staying up until probably, boy, I want to say it was after nine o'clock in the morning. Didn't sleep at all. Um the hotel was nice enough to give us like their uh, break room to hang out in because it was uh, an extended stay hotel. Um, so we were in there until about nine in the morning. We were just playing spin the re spin the music wheel. So like everybody would play a different song connected to the Bluetooth speaker and uh, ended up having uh, quite a bit of some beverages as well. But the fact that we were staying awake... And the coaching staff, we just looked miserable that next day, I remember. Because um, I think we actually got about, you know, by the time we were into the room, I think we had an earlier game. It was only like three or four hours of sleep before we had to get on the bus and, and go to the ballpark that day. But uh, that's certainly one of the more memorable things that's happened to me on the road. Um, all right, let's dive into this. We've got uh, Tim Anderson. I've had him before. Uh, 335 year. Big question for the White Sox. Can he reproduce those numbers this year? I don't know. Um, this card gives me pains. I think I've had this one before as well. Gliber Torres. Um, why does it give me pains? Because he was traded from the Cubs to the Yankees. Um, and now he's turning into a bona fide star for the Yankees. Hit 38 home runs and drove in 90 runs last year. Uh, although we did get Aroldis Chapman in exchange for him. And, uh, of course, he ended up helping the Cubs win a World Series. So I'm not going to complain too much about that. Um, Omar Narvaez. He was a catcher for the Southsiders for a while. Um... 
hit uh, 22 home runs for the Mariners in 2019. Here's a uh, very past his prime Buster Posey. Um, love the guy, fantastic to watch, um, but injuries have caught up to him here at the end of his career. Um, hasn't played over 115 games over the last two seasons. Um, average dipped to 257. Only 38 RBIs as well, so not nearly the kind of productive player he was in the early 2010s. Um, Elvis Andrews with the Texas Rangers. Uh, let's see. Base stealing batteries recharged in 2019. Extended his club record to 10 seasons of 20 or more steals and 5 of 30 or more. Um, which is a pretty incredible mark. He had 31 stolen bases last season for the Rangers, hit uh, 275. Um, I don't know. Here's a uh, National Baseball Card Day card, which apparently is August 8th, 2020. Ooh, here's a neat one, though. The last card in this bunch, uh, the hand-turned scoreboard at Wrigley Field, which is a historical landmark, did you know that? It says, Team Traditions and Celebrations. Uh, high atop the center field bleachers, hand-turned scoreboard at Wrigley pays homage to simpler times. Three Cubs employees operate the apparatus, changing the steel plates for runs, tallied in out-of-town games. Um, I've not seen anything at Wrigley, but I know at Fenway, for their manual scoreboard, it gets really hot inside there. And I've seen people actually inside um, and some of the stories that they tell about how that works and whatnot. So that was the opening day pack. Now we're going to get to Tops. Update series 2019. Um, update cards come out at the end of the season. They're for rookies, players who have been traded, who were missed in the first two series and whatnot. Um, and I can already see there's a pretty nifty one at the back of this pack. Um, so let's dive in. We got uh, Adrian Sampson from the Texas Rangers. It's his rookie card. Uh, broke in with the Mariners in 2016 before being claimed off of waivers by Texas. Um, was in Round Rock last year, AAA, 3.77 ERA, I guess in 2018, because these are 2019 cards. Here's uh, Francisco Liriano. Um, Pirates on the back of his card. A well-traveled career that, of course, mostly known for the Twins, um, but he's with the White Sox, the Pirates previously, the Blue Jays, the Astros, the Tigers, and then uh, back to the Pirates last year. Got to turn these ones upside down. This is a nifty one. Uh, Kevin Biggio. I think I've talked about this before. He's part of an incredible group in Toronto that hopefully will make the Blue Jays fun to watch for years to come with uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Kevin Biggio, and uh, Bo Bichette. Uh, he played at New Hampshire, double-A in 2018, at 26 homers, drove in 99. Um, his dad's a Hall of Famer, of course. The Blue Jays became the first ever MLB team to have two sons of Hall of Famers on their roster when they promoted Kevin in 2019, adding him to the lineup that included Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who's also a Hall of Famer. He was 3-for-4 in his third game and registered a two-homer performance just four days apart in the middle of June. Um, Derek Holland, that may bring nightmares to you White Sox fans. Um, he was with the White Sox in 2017. It was awful. 6.2 ERA. Went to the Giants and was okay. 7-9, 3.57 ERA. Uh, he led the Giants in innings and strikeouts in 2018, which was his first season in the National League. Of course, a long career as a member of the Rangers. Um, you know, I get interested in a lot of cases where they get these action shots from. This is Renato Nunez of the Orioles, and it has absolutely nothing to do with him playing baseball. He's just running through a tunnel probably on, like, opening day. Uh, an Orioles waiver claim in 2018 became a regular contributor at third base. Uh, he's with the A's and the Rangers before the Orioles, and they hit 275, um, DH slash first baseman. Renato Nunez... Here's uh, Jonathan Lucroy, long time with the Brewers, was with the Rockies and the A's as well. Um, this particular card is a member of the Angels. Um, he was only two catchers that had more hits and doubles than Jonathan from 2010 to 2018. Uh, Matt Albers with the Brewers, also a sideways card, horizontal instead of vertical. <laughs> um, Albers, a reliever, 34 appearances for the Beer Makers. In 2018, at a 7.34 ERA. Ugh. A long career, though, dates back to 06 with the Strohs, the Orioles, the Red Sox, the Diamondbacks, the Indians. Back with the Strohs, the White Sox, the Nationals, and the Brewers as well. Gosh, that's a long resume, right? Here's a uh, perennial all-star card of Aaron Judge. Can you call him a perennial all-star? I mean, he's been in the big leagues for like three years, right? Uh, let's see. 
Justin Verlander called the shot before Aaron stepped to the plate in the second inning of the 2018 All-Star Game. The Astros' ace predicted a home run. Judge just the third Yankees player to enter the break with at least 25 long balls in consecutive years. Crushed an 0-1 pitch into the American League bullpen. Um, Aaron Judge. There's another former White Sox, David Robertson. Uh, was with the Sox from 15 to 17. Was been with the Yankees a couple times as well. Um, this particular card is with the Phillies. Uh, but with the Yankees, he had some pretty good years. Um, was a closer for them. Saved 39 games in 2014. Went to the White Sox as a closer as well. Was uh, okay there. Um, whip right around one. Career numbers, 137 saves. 2.88 ERA. Still serviceable in a lot of teams' bullpens. All-star card of Joey Gallo. Um, the back of the card talks about his all-star game creds. Credentials. Second highest slugging percentage of AL hitters with 200 plus plate appearances. Fastest AL player to reach 100 homers. He did so in just 377 games. That's impressive. Um, homered in the seventh inning for the decisive run in the All Star game. Here's a National League All Star right behind him in Yasmani Grandal, um, who's now on the South Side. Uh, let's see, reigned as the MLB catching leader in extra base hits, total bases, and walks. Um, drew a leadoff walk to start a two-run rally in the eighth for the National League. Another all-star card, Whit Merrifield. There was a lot of talk about him potentially being a Cub this offseason. Nothing came to fruition. Um, he was 0 for 2 in the all-star game, but uh, made a bid to lead the American League in hits for a second straight year with 117 in the first half and trailed only Mike Trout in total bases by an American League player. Um, here's a groovy, and this is one of the reasons why you want to get these Tops update cards because you end up with rookies like this. Fernando Tatis Jr., his dad was aptly named Fernando Tatis, uh, who played a lot in big leagues with the Cardinals, for example, uh, made his debut for the Padres was two for three with singles off Madison Bumgarner in each of his first two at-bats. He gave no hint of being the youngest player to start on opening day since Adrian Beltre in 1999. Dishwasher's done. Uh, 20 years of age. He's also the youngest Padre to see action since Roberto Alomar in 1988. This has been a good pack. I got one card left, and uh, it's a home run derby rookie card of someone else we were talking about, right? Vladimir Guerrero Jr. This is who I saw um, when I opened the pack. It was the backside of his card. Um, he hit 91 home runs in the 2019 home run derby, and again, they're getting speed-based right now with the home run derby. Uh, he was the youngest participant in home run derby history. Uh, set the first round record with 29 blasts, and then uh, outlasted Jock Peterson with 40 homers in the second round in a swing off, and faced uh, Pete Alonso in the finals, crushing 22 more. But uh, Pete Alonso hit 23. Sorry about it, Vladdy Jr. Um, fun guy to watch. Looking forward to seeing the Blue Jays as they blossom. Uh, that's another edition of Quarantine Cards, round five. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to finish off this fish show. Cheers, my friends. Good night.